Hey, I'm Becca and I'm a stationery and art supply addict. The first step is admitting it, right? I've always been obsessed with art supplies and creative tools, but over the past five years, my art business has grown and so has my art supply collection, as you can see behind me. I thought it would be a total no brainer to go over all of my art studio organization tips and tricks that I've picked up along the way. Honestly, even if you're not an artist, I feel like so many of you organization lovers are gonna enjoy this regardless, because let's be honest, I have a dream box and it's super satisfying. And if you don't know what a dream box is, just wait. As we go, you'll see a ton of my favorite art supplies. And specifically, you'll see a bunch of my favorite calligraphy supplies for beginners. And speaking of which, I have a 50 plus page supplies guide that goes over all of the stuff that you're gonna see in this video. So if you're watching through this and you wanna know what something is, you can find it at thehappyevercrafter.com slash supplies and just get my full guide because I'm not actually gonna touch on every single thing that we go through here. Mostly, I just wanna run you through my favorite tips and tricks for how to organize all of this stuff. So with all of that said, let's just get right into it. So first to give you a little general overview of the studio before we get into the nitty gritty, I've got sort of different stations based on how I work. Of course, I have lots of art supply storage in different configurations, which I'll talk about shortly, including my dream box. But then I also have my computer station, a big open desk station, which is actually where I sit and film all of my tutorial videos for YouTube. And then lastly, I have a printer station. Interestingly, my background before I was a calligrapher was in interior design. So when I got this studio, I spent tons of time actually figuring out how to make the most of the space with all of these pieces of furniture I have. So as you can see right now, it looks pretty clean and empty and tidy, but that's not actually what it usually looks like. I would say that 99% of the time I actually have this dream box open displaying all of my art supplies. I've had this dream box for about a year and let me tell you, it has been a total game changer for me. Previously, my art room was always a mess because each thing did not actually have its own place. Mostly, I just had things stacked on my Ikea shelves and they did not look this organized before because they were always just jam-packed full of stuff. Then I got the dream box and it comes with all of these compartments and bins and stuff, which made it so much easier to organize everything. The dream box is definitely an investment, but in my opinion, if you're a person with lots of small things like art supplies or honestly anything, so many different types of people use this, knitting, sewing, literally anything. It's so helpful. I also plan on not having this entire room sometime in my future because it'll likely turn into a kid's room. So having the ability to fold this back up and put it in a smaller space will be so handy for me in the future. Anyway, this isn't supposed to be a dream box ad at all, but if you're seeing this and you're like, oh my God, I need one of those, I do have a discount code that they gave me, so I'll put that in the link below. But if you go to their website, you can just use Happy Ever Crafter for a discount. So what's kind of funny about my setup is that it's been sort of like an evolution. First, I got the Ikea shelving. This was in my old studio, not always in this room. And my old studio was a lot smaller. So obviously this was before I got the dream box and I was searching for a way that I could store all of my art supplies functionally, but also kind of like a wall unit to display them all in a pretty way. Plus I didn't want to invest in anything fancy at the time because this wasn't a serious job at that time. It was just a side hustle and I didn't want to spend a bunch of money on something. So these are Ikea Vitzjo shelves. I, I don't know if that's how I'm supposed to pronounce it, but we're going to go with it. And honestly, they're great. I would definitely recommend these to anyone who wants a cheap solution for this kind of thing too. And you can get different sizes and shapes and basically make a whole wall unit of your own. They're super sturdy, but at the same time, they're really pretty with the glass shelves. So like I said, I used to have these shelves jam packed with art supplies before I got my dream box, but now I love that I can actually just use them as real bookshelves too. Then for actual storage with them, I got a bunch of different Michaels and Ikea bins they have so many different options you can get. So I'd recommend just going to the store and finding ones that work for the exact supplies you have. So for example, this one is perfect for pens, even though I think it's meant for scrapbooking. I also got lots of other ones and generally I buy a few of each and I stack them, which brings me to my next point actually. The downfall of this Ikea shelving system is the stacking of the bins. I bought a bunch of them and stacked them. And at first that worked really well. 
But then over time, I started to realize that the laziness in me absolutely hates having to pull out the entire stack just to get at one of them to put something away and then having to restack them all and put them all back on the shelf. I found that really, really annoying over time. So that brings me to the next thing in the evolution of my storage system, which is this drawer system. This is just a plastic drawer system thing from Walmart. And I was super frustrated one day with having to stack all of my bins. So I went and bought the first thing I found at Walmart without really thinking about it. And truthfully, I wouldn't recommend this for art supplies. Because it's plastic, it's way too weak to hold most of my art supply stuff. And I was using this for workshop kit supplies, which tend to be extra heavy. As I started adding things, I started realizing that it was not going to hold the weight. And you can totally see that at the bottom of this shelf. These drawers don't even close anymore because they're so heavy. And then finally, I got the fancy dream box. And oh my God, was this ever a game changer for my organization skills. This solved both the issues that I was talking about earlier with wanting to be able to display things, but also not having things stacked. The dream box comes with the right bins and drawers and pieces and everything. So it took all of the stress out of that equation. What I did stress about though was like, oh my God, now I have this beautiful display unit, but how should I actually organize my supplies inside of it? I sat on that for a bit and I was kind of paralyzed by it, honestly, but I ultimately decided to just jump in and fill it up and then I could switch things up as I needed to later. The really nice thing about the dream box too is that most of the bins are standard sizes. So if you decide you put one thing on one side and you want to switch it to the other, it's really easy to just pull the drawer out and switch them. So first, when I got the dream box, I made a list of all the art supplies I had and then I kind of just started categorizing them. Create Room, which is the makers of the dream box, actually have this really handy diagram you can use for planning out where you want to put things. So I used that and I started with it and then I worked off of that when I started to fill it up. Which actually brings me to my first tip. So whether you have a dream box or not, one of the things I've learned to do for organizing art supplies is to group your items by category. So for me, that's painting versus lettering most of the time. I set up my dream box so that the left side is primarily lettering stuff. So brush pens, paint pens, pointed pens, markers, all that jazz. And then the right side is mostly painting stuff. So watercolors, acrylics, gouache, and all the other things that fall more into that category, like palettes and brushes and stuff like that. And then in the middle, I have mostly paper. I find having it set up this way super helpful for my brain because I know exactly which side to go to for what I need for a specific type of project. This method could be handy for people who do, say, knitting and sewing too, for example. So you'd have knitting stuff on one side and sewing stuff on the other. Honestly, this could work for any type of hobby, just separate things based on the category. So that's tip number one. My second tip is to group things by item type, not by color, even though doing it by color looks super satisfying. So for example, I've seen people who organize their art supplies by color, meaning they take all the pink pens, all the pink paints, all the pink papers, and they put them all in the same spot. And they do the same with their art supplies until they have basically this beautiful rainbow of supplies throughout their dream box or throughout whatever system they're using to house their art supplies. Truthfully, this this looks amazing in a dream box because it just looks like one giant rainbow, which is beautiful. But practically speaking, that would be so annoying. Imagine you wanted to pull out your entire set of acrylic paints and do a piece. But instead of just grabbing one drawer of paints and pulling the whole thing out, you'd have to pull out 12 different drawers and open each one and pull out one paint from each thing. It just doesn't make sense practically. And the whole goal of organizing is to make things easier for you. So group by type, i.e. all the Micron pens here, all the Tombow pens here, all the acrylic paints here, etc., etc. My third tip is when in doubt, rainbow it out. And I totally just made that up, but it's true. So like I said a minute ago, things organized by rainbow always look amazing. And even though I just told you not to group things by color, I'm sort of gonna tell you to group things by color, but hear me out. So you'll notice multiple spots in my dream box. I've got things organized in order of the rainbow. So I still have all of the same type of art supply grouped together, but within that, I organize it by the colors of the rainbow, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, violet. 
It just looks so satisfying this way. And again, it makes it super, super, super easy to find things and put things back in the right spot. I even do that with my books. And lastly, my fourth tip, leave a few spots for overflow or for junk drawers. And I know that might stress some of you out if you're big organizing people, but it's like having a junk drawer or one messy closet in your house. You need somewhere for the messy stuff to go when everything else is super duper organized. There are just some things that aren't going to look pretty or that you don't really fit in the right categories you've set up for yourself. So my advice here is to find inconspicuous spots. So for example, all of the lowest drawers on my dream box are dedicated to messy stuff. And then I also have some bins in my studio that are opaque, so you can't actually see what's inside them. They look pretty, but the inside doesn't. So as a little recap, I organize my art supplies by one, separating the items by category, i.e. lettering versus painting. Two, grouping things into types of item, but not by color. Three, organizing things by color of the rainbow within those types. And four, always leaving myself a few junky drawers. So yeah, that's basically it when it comes to my tips for organizing art supplies. Honestly, what I've learned above all else is just to do what you can to have them actually visible so that it makes it super easy to pull things out, but more importantly, super easy to put them back. Like I said, a dream box is a big investment, but it's been such a game changer in keeping my space organized because I can actually see it all and I can easily pop things back in. I don't leave things on my desk, which used to be a really big problem for me. So long story short, even if you don't want to invest in a dream box, I'd say that's my number one tip is just to make sure they're visible. And plus art supplies are beautiful, so you shouldn't really hide them away anyway. <laughs>